Welcome to a special CTV Sports pre-Mountain West basketball tournament show. I'm Olivia Landis. And I'm Carly Schwartzkopf. We're here to discuss, discuss some of the best moments for the Colorado State men's and women's basketball team, as well as to look at some key players. Taking a look first at the Colorado State men's basketball team, the Magnificent Seven, their name, which is so well known right now, and some of their accomplishments on the season with a video of the best plays of the year. Starting off, Carly, the unforgettable orange out where Emmanuel Magbo sinks a three with just five seconds left. He is something special. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel, so Emmanuel Magbo has been such a great player for the Rams this entire season. That shot was so weird, too. I don't even know how he made it, but he did. And, you know, just last weekend, Prentice, or on Tuesday, I mean, Prentice hitting that shot, too. This team is so clutch under high-pressure situations. Yeah. It blows my mind. It blows everyone's mind. I truly couldn't believe that this happened two consecutive games in a row where the Rams won on three-point baskets with just under five seconds left. Here we can see the crowd storming the court. They did it two nights in a row. This team, Magnificent Seven, that, that has gained so much attention. Coach Larry Eustace, you got to give him credit. He's done something amazing with these seven young men that nobody really expected. Yeah, no one expected this Colorado State team to be tied in the first place for the Mountain West. Going into the season, preseason pre Mountain West polls had them ranked 11th. They have mm -hmm. defied all the odds. They are playing amazing. Such great team basketball. You have to give credit to, there are seven players on this entire basketball team. Yeah. That is two subs. That is unreal. For tied for Mountain West, this team is talented. They know each other well. That's why they're playing so well. And looking at the statistics, you know, they've won their 13th game in Mountain West play, which is tied for the most in all CSU history. And Coach Larry Eustace went undefeated in February for the first time ever here at Colorado State, won seven games with these seven young men. And, you know, they're now competing for that Mountain West championship title. First time in over 25 years that they've ever been able to say that. Yeah, this is a huge deal that they could be taking this title home. And, you know, when this team first started off with these seven players, they lost their first game by 21 points. Kind of gave people this look, oh, this team's not going to be as well. But they have won, you know, these games by one or two points. They, they can handle the adversity. They can play well together. Mm -hmm. They have such key players, too, that have been consistent throughout every single game, which is so hard to do as a basketball player to be constantly, you know, you have to make this shot. You have to make that play. You have to do it, and they continue to do it time and time again. I think what's super unique about this team is that they're exciting to watch. People love watching these guys play. They're fun. They go out there. They surprise you. And they're the best defensive team in the Mountain West. So right there, you know, you, every game you go to, you know you're going to be watching the Mountain West's number one defensive team. But offense is what's really turned this team around. Every team that is on, whether it's on the bench, the starting five, every player is able to produce. Yeah, and you know, Larry Sashi preaches defense. That is all this team does mm -hmm. in practice. It is defense. Hours upon hours don't really have an offense, which as a basketball player back in my day, that would have been my favorite thing in the world is to be able to just play free offense, which you can tell they just know. Mm -hmm. Like, GN will sometimes ask them to clear the lane because they know exactly what he's going to do. Sometimes Emmanuel works so hard just to feed it to Nico down low. You can just tell they have their place set in their mind. They don't even need an offense. Yeah. And look, even just taking a look at some of these best plays of the year, we throw a few offensive plays in there, a few defensive plays. But, you know, 
Diving a little bit deeper into some of the individual players, Emmanuel Magba, who has been truly him along with senior Gene Clavel, the heart and soul of the team this year. He has done an outstanding job and set some records. Yeah, not only has he set records in the Mountain West, which he is ranked first for double doubles with 13. Mm -hmm. You know, he is breaking school records. He's also gaining national attention. A couple of weeks ago, he was ranked like 15th in the nation. He is a mm -hmm. great basketball player all around, super athletic. He's also a player, you know, someone who has dealt with a ton of adversity and truly overcome it. We saw in his last game, you know, when he made that last second shot, he had a ton of emotion. You can just tell this team has a lot of heart and yeah. they play hard every single game for each other, which is pretty mm -hmm. cool to watch. Yeah, it's definitely been fun to watch them, you know, having Emmanuel Magbo with 18 rebounds on the season, 13 in Mountain West play. He's definitely going to be one of the threats, especially in that Mountain West tournament here, here coming up this week. So for the Colorado State men's basketball team, they take on Nevada this coming Saturday to determine who's going to win that Mountain West Conference Championship. And, you know, let's take a look at the, some of the challenges he heading into that Mountain West tournament. Who are going to be the teams to really look out that's going to give Colorado State a little bit of a struggle? Yeah, you know, he talked about how we obviously, I mean, not we, but a lot of people want Colorado State to win. They want them to win the Mountain West. They want them to do well. But if they do win the Mountain West, they end up after their bye week, they play San Diego State, which is a super tough team to mm -hmm. play. You know, they played them tough all season long. If they do play San Diego State, though, in my personal opinion, get the hard, get one of the hard games out of the way. They're kind mm -hmm. of on a roll, you know, winning yeah. seven games in a row. They get that nice bye game to just chill out and come in mm -hmm. and get that win. I personally think that would be beneficial for CSU. And the men's conference is a little bit tougher than the women's. We do have to give them that. The Mountain West Conference is tough this year. You have Boise State, who Colorado State was swept in the series this year. Um, Wyoming's going to be tough. Fresno State's going to be tough. They finished fourth. You know, so you have multiple teams as well as San Diego State and Nevada, the top teams who are going to be extremely tough. So no matter w whether Colorado State finishes first, grabs that conference championship or not, they're going to be facing a tough team. They are. It is going to be a challenge no matter yeah. what. But all the newspapers that have coming out, you know, if they do win, it is going to be a fairy tale ending with mm. seven players. So we just have to see what happens. Mm, let's Diving a little bit into the women's side, Carly. Yeah, so let's take a look at the women's team. They have had a tremendous season as well. The Colorado State team clinched its fourth straight conference regular season title. The CSU team is, this CSU women's team is also the only Mountain West team in history to win a regular season title in four consecutive seasons. With their win, they now are number one for the Mountain West tournament next weekend in Las Vegas. And this past season has been fairly, a fairly normal season for the women's team. They usually dominate the Mountain West. Hardly any competition for those girls. And they finished 14-3 and three in the mm -hmm. conference. Yeah. You know, and Colorado State has, this women's team has been so special for so long. You know, Coach Ryan Williams talked about how he really built this program up because four years ago, the CCU women's basketball team was not winning conference championships. They were, you know, not even really winning that many games, especially at home. So for this coach, you got to give Ryan Williams a lot of credit because for him to come in here and completely turn this program around, that's been something special. And I think that's drawn a lot of attention to the women's team. But this team is a little bit different this year. They have two star players, Ellen Nystrom and Ellie Gustafson. These players have been rocking it all year, but really they are the face of the CC women's basketball team. Absolutely. Those two girls are unstoppable. You know, I was just on the computer today and there was a quiz that came up. Who is the best women's basketball player at CSU? That would have never been a question a couple years ago. It was always Becky Hammond. She's the yeah. best of the best. But these two seniors, you know, are giving her a run for her money. Both, you know, they're averaging 15, nearly 15 points per game. They both are, have been constantly named Mountain West Players of the Week throughout months. And, you know, they're both the 18th and 19th best players in history to reach over 1,000 career points. That's yeah. huge for those girls. They are mm -hmm. clutch every single game. Absolute key players for the girls. And even looking at these highlights, we do see that this team is, I would say, a little less rounded than the men's team. You know, they have these two standout players who really just feed off of each other super well. And I'm... 
obviously giving credit to this women's team. They're tremendous. They won a fourth consecutive Mountain West Conference championship. But I think it's going to be a little bit tougher of a year for the, of a year for them in the Mountain West tournament because already we've seen them have pick up three losses in conference play to Wyoming, Nevada, and Boise State. You know, so I think the tournament is going to bring them a little bit more trouble. And they have continued to struggle, you know, in the tournament. They do so well in conference play, and then they get that tournament, and it's almost like they get a little bit scared, you know, maybe just going in too confident. But they have struggled in the past at the Mountain West tournament. They are ranked def nationally defensively, but mm -hmm. offensively you cannot rely on just two players to yeah. win every single game for you, which they are clutch. But coming into this tournament, you know, other key players like Hannah Traverti, who also is a great player for them, is really going to have to step up. Mm -hmm. Especially if those two seniors get into foul trouble, it's going to be a completely different ball game. Well, speaking of the clutch players, Ellen Nishum and, El and Ellie Gustafson, excuse me, let's take a look at some of their highlights so far on this season. Absolutely dominating, you know. Going into the season, Ellen Nystrom was named Mountain, predicted to be the Mountain West Player of the Year. So she lived up to that name, and now here she is putting up the stats, as well as Ellie Gustafson, who, let's face it, we all knew she was going to have a tremendous year as well. Oh my gosh, they are just beasts down low. These are some strong girl basketball players. They are killer together. They're also best friends, which you can kind of tell a little bit on the court. They're like, they <laughs> the just chemistry. know. They're like, yeah, you backdoor right now. I'm going to feed it to you. <laughs> they play awesome together. Like, look at, like, these moves down low are pretty awesome. I mm -hmm. just, I don't know. I think they are going to be unstoppable. Could easily be the best players in the Mountain West. Looking at Colorado State men's basketball team again, they did just come up with another huge award. Carly, Colorado State's head coach Larry Eustace was named just recently the Mountain West Coach of the Year, as well as senior guard Jean Clavel, who was given the honors Mountain West Player of the Year. This is huge for this team, this magnificent seven. Talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, head coach Larry Stacey winning Mountain West Coach of the Year is a pretty awesome honor, especially the fact that he was coaching virtually seven players this entire season and brought them just shy of a Mountain West championship you know, victory. That would have been the first time in 27 years, but they took second place overall in conference play, which is a pretty big deal. Awesome for him to win. He's been doing great with the program. And Gene Clavel, you know, we always say Emmanuel Magro is super consistent, but Gene has been consistent from the points, and that's all you can ask from a point guard. Yeah, definitely. And these, like you said, these are huge honors, not only for the coach, but as well as Gene Clavel for the senior that came back from an injury and was able to recover and get those honors. But this is huge for the team. You know, now we move on to the Mountain West tournaments that we will have coverage coming this weekend. Well, that wraps up our pre-Mountain West basketball tournament show. Carly and I will be headed to Vegas this week to give you coverage on both the men's and women's basketball teams, so make sure to keep up with our Twitter accounts and CTV Channel 11's YouTube page for all of our videos. Have a great night and a safe spring break. Welcome back to CTV Sports. I'm Olivia Landis, currently joined by Ellie and Ellen. Congrats on the win, guys. So, you know, being the senior leaders coming into this tournament, how important was it for you guys to get that, establish that leadership role in this first game? I mean, we, we've both been here before. I mean, we played them before. So I think it's important for us to, to show, I mean, how assertive and how aggressive you have to be to beat these teams because everybody's coming in with the same mentality. No, I would say the same. Um, we play them too two times before so we kind of we, we know what type of team they are and they're really good uh, and as Ellen said in the media before it doesn't matter if they're up 30 or down 30 they always go 100% all in but we were prepared and we were focused we stayed locked in so we were just having fun and you guys were both leading in scoring on the team what was really going well for you tonight down in the paint I think we wanted uh, we wanted to take them to the post because um, that's been working really well for us. So I think that was that was the plan. Yeah, and then just because we have so good shooters, um, they can't really like go double on us or uh, really stay in the paint uh, because then we can just pass out and they would just make the three. Uh, so that's why they, that gave us more space in the pro and just work and try to get be aggressive, get to basket. How excited are you guys to play tomorrow? Advancing in the round? Really, really excited. Yeah, we're so excited. Okay, so you guys looked like you were struggling a little bit with that zone and that half court press. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, I think playing uh, San Jose, they're always so, so aggressive. So I think 
they kind of caught us a little bit on our heels, uh, on our toes. So, I mean, they're a tough team to play because they're all super aggressive, super quick and fast. They have a lot of guards. So, yeah, we struggled a little bit with that. No, I would say the same. Uh, we try to find our open spots, and when, once we get the ball, we just have to uh, be strong with the ball and just have patience and not just throw the ball uh, right away. Uh, but as Ellen said, they're they're a really good defensive team, and uh, but I, we we stayed focused, so that helped us a little bit. But I agree. I agree with you. Also, you know, your coach talked about how this game truly was, you know, a picture per perfect look at what a crazy tournament looks like you know you come down you have to make those clutch free throws you're up by a little bit you're close it's tied you know this also you know you talked about in the press conference your sophomore season how that just was not how you guys wanted that tournament to go you're a really solid team do you think you're a little bit happy that you got this this game kind of out of the way you can like kind of you know throw it over your shoulder in terms of it was a little not as what you expected, or do you think, you know, this is how the tournament is, like this is how every game is going to go, just because it's a whole different animal than just conference play? Yeah, I think uh, we have to come in with the mentality that this is how every team is going to play, and they're all going to be aggressive because it's, you know, it's everything or they're out, like everybody's out. So everybody's on the same level right now. So, um, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, everything can happen in basketball, and I feel like Ellen and I, we have experienced, like during these four years here in the tournament, we have experienced everything. Uh, so we were prepared, and this is um, this is a good way for the people on the team that are here for the first time to just like uh, realize that everyone that walks on that court, they're, they're just gonna be super aggressive and everyone just wants to win. Well, thanks ladies for joining us. Good luck in the rest of the tournament. This is all the updates we have for you now, but we will have more for you next week. I survived in advance. That's that's what we did. Um, San Jose State's a, always a tough matchup. They they score the ball so well, and they can score so fast with with the three ball. So no lead is ever safe when you play San Jose. We knew that, and I think the biggest thing with this game for us is that we experienced a little bit of everything. We. We experienced a lead. We experienced giving up a lead. We experienced having to make free throws in a late game tournament situation, making some shots when uh, the momentum's in favor of the opponent. So like I told the kids, you're now, if you weren't in this tournament before, you are now in this tournament because you just experienced, I, I feel, everything that you might experience throughout a, a whole week in one game. I mean, we have experience from this season too. We know. Uh, what type of team San Jose is. They're really good and they're always going to fall in. Um, so um, that was just, of course, like Ellen and I, we seen it, we remember our sophomore year. Um, but we're a different team and um, we just stay locked in and just focus strong with the ball. I think um, our poise was good. We, uh, our defense was really good rebounding, um, but I think I mean, we got a taste of what the tournament is like and all the people that are new to our team, you know, got a taste of what it's like and, you know, how it's like, so now, you know, now we're in it. You know, this team is, the thing is, is this is how we play, you guys. I mean, we could play Fort Collins high school girls team and we win by five, all right? That just seems to be our nature. We scored 60, what we score today, 65 points on one of 11 shooting from the the three. So really, that's really good offense for us. It is. We just did, you know, a couple more three balls, and we're talking 70 points, and we're ecstatic with 70 points. But um, it was, uh, we we don't ever seem to panic. You know, we've got Ellen and Ellie, and we throw the ball to them. They seem to make some plays. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think we ever, ever saw or ever felt that we were going to lose the, the basketball game. Good afternoon, I am Olivia Landis reporting for CTV Sports, joined by Carly Schwarzkopf reporting all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada at the 2017 Men's and Women's Mountain West Basketball Championships. Carly, today we are going to see the Colorado State Women's the second day for the Mountain West Championship for the Women's Colorado State. We'll be facing San Jose State in the second game today at noon. Mm -hmm. Colorado State did get that first round by there, coming fresh off of a fourth consecutive Mountain West Conference Championship. Let's dive a little bit into this game and what it's really going to mean today. Yeah, you know, we saw the players earlier getting a little pumped up outside their hotel room, so they're really hungry to get to play, especially yeah. with that bye. And the last time these two teams met, Carter State won by over 15 points. It was 
pretty easy game for them, so I predict that they're going to win by a lot today. Yeah, especially with leaders like Ellen Neustrom, who for the second consecutive year in a row has been named the Mountain West Player of the Year. Of the year. Excuse me, huge honors. And to have a leader like that on the team is going to be absolutely detrimental to San Jose State. You know, a player that's able to not only crash the boards but get that offense. Colorado State is ranked nationally in defense. We got to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, they are a amazing team defensively, especially, you know, that is where they get their rebounds. You know, you just talked about Ellen, Ellen Nystrom last time. She got a double-double. They played against San Jose State and Eileen Nystrom. You know, they're 17th and, I mean, Eileen Gustafson, they are 17th and 18th in program history for mm -hmm. rebounding. So those two seniors are really good down low. And Colorado State is 33rd, ranked 33rd nationally for three-pointers, so mm -hmm. they can shoot too. Yes, Hannah Taverti ranked 6th in the conference for those three-pointers, so she's going to be another key player. Colorado State does seem to like to drive it inside, especially with those two seniors, Ellen and Ellie. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot of inside the paint offense. Colorado State always is always on top of their game inside the paint, but they're able to kick it out and really hit those threes with players like Hannah Taverdi. What is this win going to mean for Colorado State today? This win for Colorado State is also going to be a huge win for them because last time they came to this tournament they were predicted to do really well they won Mountain West again you know this is the fourth year they have won Mountain West you know regular season play and came into the tournament and did not show up so this yeah. year they're probably hungry for redemption so this will seal them another game tomorrow and the winner you know that depends on other games but Colorado State will play again tomorrow and then one more game and then championship. So this is a big game for them. Yeah, if Colorado State does take home the win today, they will either be facing Boise State or New Mexico in the semifinals. That's also going to be a pretty big game for them because they Colorado State did lose to Boise State earlier in the season. CSU has had a little bit of more trouble in conference play than we've seen in the past few years. They did pick up three, three losses in conference play. So I think no matter which way this tournament goes, CSU is going to face some pretty tough teams. Yeah, they definitely will. And, you know, with that Boise State team, so they got to field this win if they kind of want to get the ball rolling. So, Carly, taking a little bit of a look at the bracket, what are our predictions for the semifinals and this championship game? Well, for the semifinals, we think it's going to be Colorado State versus Boise State. We talked a little bit about that earlier. And then we predict that Colorado State will make it to, you know, the final game. Looking at the lower half of the bracket for the semifinals, we predict, you know, Wyoming versus UNLV. These are four really good teams going into, you know, that final four. And then we predict that Wyoming will beat UNLV to play Colorado State in the championship game, which would be on Saturday at noon. So we're predicting Colorado, predicting that Colorado State is going to walk away with the championship. And Wyoming is a tough team there. They have that number two seed coming into this tournament. So we're predicting that they're going to go pretty far as well, and CSU and Wyoming will face off for our predictions in that final championship round. Yeah, that'll be a good one too. You know, CSU always plays Wyoming so much in the lower, in the later half of their season, so that'll be a good one. Well, that is all the updates that Olivia and I have for you right now, but we will have more for you after the game. And Olivia and I will be right back here tomorrow as Colorado State, if they win today, will play again tomorrow. So be sure to visit our YouTube page, CTV11, for more updates. Hello Rams, I'm Tim McCall, here to keep you updated with all the latest and greatest in the world of Rams sports. For CSU men's basketball, the regular season has come to an end, and the team is currently in Las Vegas, waiting for their first matchup of the Mountain West Conference Tournament. This week, after the conclusion of the regular season, the Mountain West Conference handed out its two most important individual awards. This year, both awards were given to CSU Rams. Head coach Larry Eustacey was honored with the Mountain West Coach of the Year Award, and senior guard John Clavel was honored with the Mountain West Player of the Year Award. Clavel averaged 21.2 points per game and had 13 double-doubles in 18 contests versus Mountain West opponents. Eustacey won the Coach of the Year after leading the Rams to a 13-5 record within the conference. After being picked to finish 7th in the conference in the preseason polls, Eustacey was able to guide the Rams to a 2nd place finish in the Mountain West. In addition to Eustacey and Clavel's recognition, senior big man Emmanuel Amagbo was also named to the All-Mountain West Conference first team. CSU is ranked number 2 in the Mountain West tournament and will play their first game this Thursday at 7 p.m. They will take on the winner of Air Force versus Wyoming, which will be played on Wednesday. 
Don't miss CSU playoff basketball this week as they make a run for the Mountain West title and the March Madness bid that comes along with it. Coach Eustacey is not the only CSU coach who has been recognized for his efforts this season. Earlier today it was announced that the U.S. Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association named CSU distance coach Art Seamers as the Men's Assistant Coach of the Year for the Mountain Region. Seamers was given the award after he led the distance runners at CSU to an incredible season. Three of Seamers' runners, Grant Fisher, Gerald Mock, and Cole Rockhold, qualified for the NCAA Division I Indoor Track and Field Championships. At the Mountain West Conference Championships, these three runners, along with fellow Ram Jefferson Abbey, finished 1, 2, 3, and 4 in the 3,000 meters. All four Rams broke the meet record for the fastest time in the 3,000 meters. It is performances like these that led to Seamers earning Assistant Coach of the Year honors. In further track and field news, the CSU Rams are now ranked 8th in the country in the most recent U.S. Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association poll. This marks the highest ranking a CSU track and field team has ever earned. Prior to this season, the Rams had never ranked higher than 34th in the country, which happened last season. This year, the Rams have been ranked every single week and have not fallen lower than 12th in the nation. Junior shot putter Mustafa Hassan has continued to lead the Rams, and his Mountain West record-breaking throw of 69 feet and 10.75 inches is two and a half feet further than the next best throw by anyone in the NCAA this season. Hassan will look to break his own Mountain West record for the furthest throw when he participates in the NCAA Division I Indoor Track and Field Championships, where he will be joined by five CSU teammates. The meet will take place on March 10th and March 11th. Be sure to check out Collegian.com to see if your Rams can continue to break records and bring more awards back home to Fort Collins. That's all we have for sports today, but don't go anywhere because up next it's Ryan Christ with all the latest in entertainment. Good evening and thanks for tuning in to CTV Sports. I'm Alexandria Clow. The Colorado State men's basketball team fell 85-72 against the Nevada Wolfpack last Saturday. This loss put the team in the number two seed for the Mountain West Championship Tournament. The Rams just had tip-off at 6 tonight Pacific time against Air Force, who is in the number 10 seed. The last time Colorado State played Air Force was back in January, and CSU ultimately walked away with an 85-58 win against the Falcons. If Colorado State wins tonight, they will move on to play tomorrow night. For more updates on this game and the rest of the tournament, follow the Collegian online and the CTV 11 YouTube page. On Tuesday, the Colorado State softball team headed to Greeley to play Northern Colorado. They beat the Bears 8-5 and CSU is now 11-4 in the season. Sophomore Lauren Buchanan hit a two-run home run in the sixth inning. Pitcher Kalen Pierce pulled the team together at the end by pitching eight strikeouts, ultimately bringing the Rams to a victory. The Colorado State, this Colorado State Classic 2 will be played this Friday through Sunday here in Fort Collins. The Rams will face Wisconsin and Maine twice in the tournament. The 2017 Colorado State football team Colorado State football season is approaching. The 15 spring practices will begin on March 21st and finish on April 22nd with the annual Green and Gold Spring Game. It was just announced that the spring game will be played on the Lagoon Field across from the Lori Student Center. The game is free to the public and everyone is encouraged to come out and support their fellow Rams. That is all I have for sports tonight, but don't go away because Delaney is up next with entertainment. <laughs> 